we were doing the little known fat business. <laughs> co-founder and CEO of Chaya. Chaya is started out as a space sharing platform where individuals and businesses could list uh, their properties to people who are looking for venues for their events, photo shoots, accommodation, etc. However, after existing for about two years, we realized there was a massive market and a bigger problem that we could be solving with space sharing, which is housing for bachelors, specifically women who do not have um, enough spaces for them to live without fear or close to work where they can live with other families uh, individually. So they usually have to choose between affordability and safety, which is an unfair choice, right? So that's something that we're working towards. And yeah. So business-wise, we always have the chicken and egg problem, right? Without spaces, there's no users. Without users, there's no spaces. But personally, uh, I think the fact that I was a woman or I was seen as a girl because I also look young and I guess I was young back then. So that kind of played a little bit against me because, you know, like people would be like, okay, you're a little young, you're a girl, you know, I wouldn't be taken seriously by most people. Uh, as well as like, um, I would sometimes go into meetings where I'd be treated, like, I feel like I was seen as an intern at most or something, you know, uh, yeah. when like compared to my co-founder who's a male. So yeah, those are some of the initial struggles that I went through. However, there were a bunch of people who actually, you know, made me feel better because they were like, wow, you know, that you know you're doing this regardless of the gender so i'd like to also have one funny and ugly comment I would say uh, is that a lot of people assume we were doing the little known fat business because we had we started accommodation and because our target market was young people bachelors so yeah that's one of the funnier and uglier comments we have faced biases that I am working on breaking is the fact that women are just there to be a face of a company you know like just communications or like no I feel like women are treated as like no um, they're just there for either filling up the quota or just to raise easier funding so kind of that kind of takes away from the hard work that we actually put in or our actual value to the company itself so while I feel I'm grateful for all these people who are helping women founders, I feel like it kind of works as a double-edged sword sometimes as well because it takes away our value to other people because they're like, oh, me, they don't know what I'm or me, they don't know what I'm blah, blah, blah. So that's one of the things I want to break by showing that, you know, like, by going far enough that, you know, they're going like, okay, you know what, she can't have gone this far just by being a woman. So coming at you. So like I've spoken with a lot of founders or would-be founders and one thing I realized is family support is really important. Um, I never really noticed that my family support, like how important my family support was because it's not like you know they went out of their way to tell me like hey for here do this or like hey here's some support but just the fact that they never stopped me from pursuing what I wanted to pursue. The fact that you know I'd be late at night working or like, go bar for like go out of Taka alone or with guys for work. They've never at any point um, made it any difficult or like posed a problem and I think a lot of families do that so I'm really thankful for my family to have done this and done it so easy that I didn't even notice that they were supporting me in such a massive way so shout out to my mom and dad and my brothers and sisters.